Welcome back to Close Up. Turning now to the race for Congress in New Hampshire's first district. Republicans are taking on the task of trying to unseat Representative Chris Pappas, who's now in his third term. One of the challengers this cycle is a familiar face, former state senator and executive counselor Russell Prescott, who is our guest on Close Up this morning. Counselor, thank you for being here. Great to be here. Thanks. So House Republicans just voted to impeach uh, the Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas. Would you have been among those voting yes on this impeachment? Yes, I think that happened for six months of investigation. They did find credible things to, to talk about, uh, you know, breaking the law, not, not following law for immigration. Uh, it's, it's part of the catch and release system that happened. And also the fact that he kind of like mis misled the, the Republicans in the uh, you know, investigations by saying that everything's good at the, at the border when it really wasn't anything, everything good at the border. So what I believe is that, you know, when I, when, if, I, if I look at this race and I see that, well, Chris Pappas is the opponent, I'd say Chris and I in, in 2016, 17, and 18, we were side by side. If I went to Chris and said, did you know that this is happening with one of our higher officials? And what do you think? We ought to bring the attention to the governor and say, could you investigate this? That's what I think this is, for sure. With the impeachment process is that, all right, we got some credible evidence here. We need it to be proven credible or not get it into the Senate and see how they handle it. I hope they do not just dismiss it out of hand. Then that's a, a political activity at that point. Why not figure out what's the truth and what's not truth? I think the American public needs to know. And you and uh, Congressman Pappas served as executive counselors there, seated right next to each other uh, at yes, the end of the did. table yes. in Concord. But so that's why you mentioned I the process with what he's done. He's, yeah. he's, he's you know, called it, you know, he voted the wrong way. You need to make sure that people have the opportunity to see what's right and what's wrong with any one of our officials. We would always do that here in a state. Something changed when he went to Washington. And yet, impeachment is for high crimes and misdemeanors. Can you identify that high crime or misdemeanor c committed by Secretary Mayorkas? Well, certainly, when you let 1.6 million people come through, that even, you know, some of the memoranda says that, you know, I don't even care if they have a criminal record. You let them go. You do not detain. That needs to be determined in the Senate. That is then that's the determination. Is it a high crime? It's not the House. The House did their job. They researched a lot. They got all the information. Here it is. Is it credible enough to do an impeachment? Yes. Let's investigate this. I think Chris Pappas did the exact wrong thing. Should the House be calling a vote on the immigration bill passed by the Senate? On the House call it? I think we've got to do three things at one time. We've always talked about a balanced budget here in New Hampshire. We must work on that at the same time that we work on our border. That's number one. Take care of our backyard, or which we can't take care of anyone else's backyard. I have compassion for Ukraine. I have compassion for Israel. We need to do all three things at the same time. If we don't discuss them at the same time, all we're doing is getting an argument over here that one wins and one doesn't. And that's politics. Let's get to the table, stop arguing, and make sure we get right to work right now. If I were a congressman, that's the only thing I would be doing because we need to close that border and we need to be the strongest in the, in the world. That's a balanced budget and we need to help the world. We want more, more republics around the country, around the world. We don't want less. We don't want more communism. We want less. We don't want more terrorism. We want less. We must realize the big picture, open our scope of vision, not just we're gonna talk about the border or just talk about Ukraine. We have to have all three done at the same time, or else we're being derelict in our duty. I would do that on day one. I would do it today if I could. And yet, you know, it seems like for a lot of Republicans, even the idea of compromise with the Democrats becomes anathema to their values. Because you saw on the Senate side, Senator Lankford there made that deal with the Democrats. Some would say he got a pretty good one. There's no amnesty in that bill whatsoever. And yet everyone turned on him and said, well, there you go. You, you gave up X, Y, Z. So how do you work to move forward when it's so hard to cut a deal uh, with the media ecosystem that's out there that you could be vilified simply for cutting a deal with Democrats? You cannot leave one without the other being done, and that is the balanced budget. That's the key. That's why it failed going into the House. It's a three-legged stool. You can't, it's that stool will never stand when we just do arguing about the border and aid to Ukraine. We have to do it all together. It will stand at that point if we all get into the room. I'm the one who was the prime sponsor of voter ID. It passed through John Lynch. Why? 
It, it, he didn't veto it. Why did it also pass judicial muster by the Obama administration? Is because I talked with everyone in this state, starting with the clerks of, of New Hampshire, and made sure that it could be implemented and worked. That's what needs to be done in Washington, D.C. I have that experience, and we will get it done if I'm there. There seem to be a growing number of conservatives uh, who's, and right-leaning voters as well who seem to be, at best, indifferent to the potential threat posed by Vladimir Putin. Now, Putin's top political opponent, Alexei Navalny, just died in prison. How would you describe Vladimir Putin? I would describe it as a leader of a communist nation which has problems with America. That's how I would say it. We have to attack in terms of making sure that we keep Russia in check. They have their own sovereign nation. They should you know, rule themselves the way they deem fit. But to have that expand, we need to check that. Again, have to do all things at the same time. If we don't, we won't get anything passed. What about when former President Donald Trump, you know, essentially invites Putin to invade NATO countries who are delinquent on their payments? What did you think when he said that? I don't know if I even heard that. So essentially the comment that was made, and you know, of course, this is a, a rally and President Trump speaks the way that he speaks, but he essentially said that, you know, if NATO countries may be delinquent on their payments, that he thought, you know, just let them, let Putin feast, essentially. I would say this. I would say if a, if a NATO nation gets attacked, I think that the United States is obligated to take part in defending that NATO nation in, in, in commensurate with the other nations taking their part. We don't want to take the full load like we do with the United Nations. We contribute about two-thirds to their budget. We're going to make sure our foreign policy doesn't, is not a crutch for other nations not doing what they should be doing. So when it comes to NATO, that's, that's my opinion. We've done a lot on foreign policy. I do have to ask you if you think Israel has gone too far in trying to eliminate Hamas in Gaza. I believe that you have to make sure that they were attacked at that time, and they have the, uh, the, the sovereign right to make sure that they uh, get to the point where their enemy is neutralized forever. That's what needs to be done. It's the bad actors, it's the terrorists that need to be, you know, taken care of. The cost of higher education continues to be crippling for a lot of younger Americans who want to get ahead in life and go to college to do so. Do you have any ideas or plans that could either reduce that debt or reduce the cost of higher ed in the first place if you get to Congress? Certainly can. You know that the, the inflation took place over these past a number of years. If we can get inflation in check, which is by balancing our budget slowly and making sure it happens, the, the cost of education and the cost of everything else starts to become more affordable. Uh, inflation happens so fast that employment uh, wages didn't keep up. We're getting now to the point where wages are now catching up with inflation and if we continue to, to work hard to make sure that we balance our budget and stop the inflation of so much dollars going into our economy because of so much borrowing, I believe that the, the, the economy will right itself and people will start earning a better living and being able to afford education as well as, as even housing we talked about the last time. All right. Russell Prescott, thanks for joining us here on Close Up. We'll see you out there on the trail. Absolutely. Thank you.